All right, so this year I am not doing a traditional planner. Of course, I have a calendar and other binders and things, but as far as homeschooling, I am not going to be like planning every week or month. I plan my whole year out up front and then use logs. Let me show you how I do that. So basically, the key thing I find is knowing what is my day going to look like every day. Of course, it can change, but you know, on your best homeschool day, what's it going to look like? So I map that out and I have like my morning time routine. And by the way, I'm going to be teaching my kids plus four other kids, but I'm going to have another teacher working with me. We're going to be doing like a hybrid. So that's only two days a week. And then the other two days will be just me and my kids. And then the fifth day of the week, Friday is our homeschool group. So anyway, so I mapped out our schedule. I have for each grade level. So this could apply to you if you have multiple grade levels. Okay. What am I doing for my kindergarten or my third or fifth grader, my first grader, my preschooler. And then having them do the same thing at the same time can be helpful. Um, obviously, sometimes it's the opposite. You know, you might find it's better to do math with one kid, you know, at a different time or whatever, but I'm going to try it this way. And so I put what I'm doing for each kid and, you know, I put times because it is a hybrid, but otherwise, of course, we know as homeschoolers, we kind of loosely use the clock. Um, you know, kind of more of anchor points. But anyway, so that's kind of the key thing. All right, so yeah, math, reading, writing, and history I put because, like, I might do, like, a little break where I read aloud to them for history and then, um, or social studies, and then do spelling for the older phonemic awareness or, like, word building with letter, um, movable letters and things like that for the youngers. And then during lunch, I'm going to utilize that block to read a science read aloud and maybe tag on a little experiment while they're eating or right after they eat and then playtime. So my goal is that they be done by 12.30 and playing from 12.30 to one o'clock. And then I mapped out more detail of what, you know, my kindergartner's math routine would look like because I'm not using a curriculum, I do my own thing. But my schedule for, you know, what days we're gonna be actually doing school um, and when we're doing holiday breaks, um, and our homeschool group and things like that. And, you know, if you have a thing like a grade level checklist of things they should know, but mostly that kind of thing, most people wouldn't need if they're following curriculum, it's open and closed. And you know that if you follow it, <laughs> it has exactly the expectations you should need. All right. So why I don't need a planner is one, even if, you know, for my son, I'm following a curriculum for my daughter, I'm not, but either way, I've created and have a, a plan already up front. So, you know, just the only thing that might be nice to log is like, okay, what books did I read aloud to them? And this isn't even a requirement for evaluators or they might want you to show them a log, but if you don't, you know, and you just tell them some of the books you read, that's probably good enough. But I like to log their read alouds. And so, so these read alouds would be ones that all the kids are gonna hear this is a log of read alouds that I might just read to the kindergartners, and this would be the, a log that, of books that would just be read to the third and fifth graders. Um, is it really necessary to do all that? Probably not. I could just have one reading log and write the name of who is present, or not at all. Like It's just completely optional, but I like keeping logs. We'll see if I keep up with it. Science, I'm going to be reading books. So if I did an experiment and I didn't have them fill out some kind of experiment sheet, which I may or may not do, um, I might forget that we did that experiment if I don't look back at pictures. So it might be nice to see what experiments or activities we did for science right here. Because I did not make science lesson plans. I don't have an open and go curriculum. If I did, it would clearly state what science experiments we did or didn't do if we check it off in the curriculum. Um, and then that's just read a lot of books I read to my kids on the days I don't have hybrid. Okay, so this is... I think something that would be helpful to everybody. Yes, logs are helpful. And in other videos you've seen that for math or other books for math, I would print out the table of contents or copy it. And then each time I completed a lesson, I'd write the date and check it off. Um, and then you just can put the table of contents in your portfolio for your child, if you keep one or a bin or whatever. Um, or you just keep the whole math book. But if you don't want to keep the whole math book in a few years, you still have that table of contents dated and checked, and you would maybe pull out the assessments out of the math book and have, you know, that, and then trash the math book at some point. 
But this is cool. Um, I made this. It's a 180 day checklist. So one week is on one page. And so let's say it's the first day of school. I put the date, put day one, and then I check off all the parts of our day and I custom this, customize this to have exactly what I would want them to do each day. And then the days we have homeschool group, we just literally check that box because, you know, we would have just done co-op. Um, and then I can write notes for my students or my own kids of progress points or how we're doing, like, oh, they mastered all their sight words or whatever, you know, or, you know, that kind of thing. And so I basically made, I know there's an average of 180 days, which is 36 weeks. So I made 36 pages or 36 weeks worth of pages. Am I really going to do 180 days of school? Probably not. But um, even if we take a day off, you know, I can still count it as a day because we probably went somewhere or did something. Um, or I might not count it and not care that I didn't get to 180 days. As long as we complete the curriculum and my kids are learning, then that's okay. In my state, we're not required to do 180 days, but that's generally what you do in the public school. And then here I have my curriculum choices for my students. I made it fancy. Normally I wouldn't make it fancy for my own kids, but I'm like, well, I might as well. So this is like my son's curriculum choices and I made screenshots and made all, made it look all pretty and fancy. Um, and then my daughter, this is how I mapped out what she's going to be doing for kindergarten or kindergarten. Actually, this is my son's when he was in kindergarten and I'm just reusing it. And so it, it might actually be a little bit different and you'll see on my homeschool video, uh, choice for my daughter, how I map out her curriculum and, let me know if you think that's going to be interesting to you or not, because I know for some people, they're like, well, I'm not going to do all that work and map out my own curriculum. And so I'm like, well, I don't want to waste people's time, but it could be still interesting, even if you, you know, would just want to buy a curriculum. And then I took my son's curriculum and the curriculum I'm using for my students. And I looked at each one and decided, and this is something you can do with your curriculum if it's not obvious. Like if you have the good and the beautiful, there's 120 lessons. It's kind of like, okay, I just do one a day and we probably end early and you're good to go. But some things, if you're piecing them together, it's like not that obvious. And you might say, well, how many pages do I need to do to finish by the end of the year? Or in this case, this book is for third and fourth graders. Maybe I don't mind that my son takes two years to finish it. So I would just put about how many pages I want him to do each day or how many sections and I, that's, you know, for each one to be different. I would just kind of give myself a ballpark of how much to do each day to achieve our goals. And so making a scope and sequence, if your curriculum isn't obvious, is another good thing. So, and then this is just a checklist of writing assignments. So for my son, I'm using a combination of two writing curriculums. I'm using structure and style, which is more teaching them how to write simple one to five paragraph essays progressively. And then I'm using, um, it's not on this sheet, but I'm gonna use writing rhetoric. And so I made a checklist to kind of just have it have a way for me to remember like how to combine those. So I might be like, okay, once a month, make sure I do a little bit of one essay from rhetoric of writing. And then as he finishes the units from, sorry, style and structure, maybe one essay a month. We're not using the whole thing. We're not gonna do an essay like every week like they want him to. So we'll have off weeks where we're using the easier curriculum that's more Charlotte Mason style and simple, you know, written narrations and dictation and copy work and the weeks we do that and as we finish those little 14 units, we'll check those 14 units off. And then we'll have weeks where, um, you know, that's not gonna complete, you know, the whole year. You can write a letter or a book report or do some free writing or cursive um, copy work. And so it's just for me to have a year at a glance and what we actually ended up doing. And if, you know, you're not the type who types it up, well, you can use like a little planner sheet like this and just write out what your curriculum choices are and help plan out your year at a glance. So in some, having a log for reading or anything that's not evidenced, like I don't need a writing log because, well, I can see the writing and we date it each time. I don't need a math log. I can just use a table of contents or actually just look in the math book at what we actually accomplished. 
um, you know, science, you might not. But for me, I'm like I said, I, I think it'll be helpful because I might not have paper to evidence what we did for science. And then books you read to them. So, um, and then books they read to themselves are in their own reading folders. So that's another thing that logs for. And then just your daily checklist. This is what I think is the most important piece because it helps me to really make sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing each day. And if we didn't, it was intentional. Like, and I can see that clearly in the checklist that, oh, we only just did a field trip today or we only just did whatever subjects we did. Um, but it's nice to look back and just do that. And you could use it for your kid too as like a planner. Have them check off what they've done. If they're older, this would be an okay format for an older kid. So I don't find it helpful to sit down every week. I tried this for a few weeks and then it stopped. And what am I doing this week? And then write down all the lessons we're going to do for math, all the books we're going to read for reading, what we're going to do for writing, blah, blah, blah. Well, first of all, why is that even necessary if you have a curriculum that's open and go? Which I don't, but even so, I don't find that necessary. Why write what I'm going to do? Instead, this is what makes more sense, is to write what you're going to do for the whole year, step one, um, Pick your curriculum choices, actually, step one. Just figure out what you're gonna do for each subject. One of your curriculum choices, step two, what I do, is figure out um, like the scope and sequence, okay? So if it's not obvious, you know, then you map it out. How many pages or lessons do I need to do each day or week or whatever? And kind of, you know, write it out, write down the name of the curriculum and then how much you're doing. And maybe even on the front of the book in permanent marker or on the inside of the book with a sticky note, write what your scope and sequence is. Sequences. It doesn't have to be fancy like this. After you've done that, then you can really, now you know what your curriculum is, then you can do this step. Then you can actually think about, well, what's my day gonna look like with that curriculum? And that's when you can map it out and make a little daily schedule, your ideal schedule. And believe me, it's probably going to change you're gonna to have to adjust it so you're going to work through this work through this before school starts but then you're going to probably have to see how it really goes and make adjustments and that's totally fine and some days might look a little different you gotta be flexible and then as your year goes when you read aloud you can keep a log when your child reads a book have them write it down or you write it down for them what they read or you know even keep a tally log where they keep track of how many books with tallies that they're reading if that's too much to write it down and then daily, you can, you know, keep a little checklist of what they're actually accomplishing each day or have them keep their own checklist, like a personal checklist that's like a one page per week and, you know, each day they check the boxes. But for me, this is what I'm doing. And by the way, I have one of these 180-day checklists for each of my students and children. And so the older ones would check off their own. And for my younger ones, I would check what I did with them. And then all this can go in their portfolio at the end of the year. So I hope that was helpful to see how I plan. I know I had a mom in my homeschool group who I shared some ideas and she stopped writing out in her planner ahead of time what she was going to do each week because she found she didn't always end up even doing it and so it becomes this time consuming thing kind of track what you actually did do instead of always writing what you will do and then hoping to check it off i hope that was helpful i'm actually going to keep my planner right at the dining room table in my morning basket that way first thing in the morning i can just pull it out and go ahead and reference my schedule for what our routine is for morning time write down what books we read um, if I can and um, you know that I can bring this with me into the homeschool room and at the end check off what we did for my daughter and have the older ones check off theirs.